I want to tell stories about things that are really happening to people that are painful. And so a lot of my films now are like a lot more controversial and boundary pushing and deal with real social issues. Films, the cinematic universe, has been an influential force in driving culture to where it is today. We've looked to cinema for answers, questions, and sometimes just to feel good. The commercial space has been the industry that filmmakers go to to make money and pay the bills. But what really is the difference? Today, we take a look at what makes each industry unique and what filmmakers are doing in the commercial space and vice versa. This is on road. Sometimes when you believe in something, just do it. Sure. Uh, sure especially sure. if you have a team of people that believe in that same thing as well. Yeah. I yeah, think that's yeah. the thing that happened with us at that time. We all believed that we can actually achieve something, do something with sure. just, you know, the small that we have. Ofente Moaze has won over 40 awards in the last three years and is firmly one of the most influential film and content creators in our space. For me, Hangman is probably my proudest uh, film that I've shot, yeah, like a yeah, shot. Yeah. And then because it, I think, I feel like it was it was a passion project. Yeah. And then you can see it in the work, you know, everybody just came in, gave in their time. We all had this story, really wrote this awesome story that we just wanted to actually put it out there. film came out so nicely. Yeah, yeah. It was beautiful. I think it, it hit it all the right notes. It was very emotional. Yeah. Like at the end, Vana, if you're not crying, that means yeah. I... You got <laughs> Something's a, dead you inside, got man. Ice. <laughs> you got ice. You got ice in your heart. Um, yeah. yeah. Obviously, we know that from a production standpoint, we are on the same level as the best in the world, you know? So why would you say it is that our movies our final products doesn't actually translate. Yeah, that's a good question. Legendary South African filmmaker, Gray Hoffmeyer, has directed some of the most successful films in South African cinema over a career that has spanned over four decades. I think we are wrapped up in ourselves. I think, you know, our, our issues are so bloody important to us that nobody re else really gives a damn about them, you know. I don't want to sit next to Mandu. I said, I don't want to sit next to Mandu. Germans used to come and shoot stuff for television and, and, and they, they always have, they've always liked coming here. A lot of South Africans learned their business in, in TV and I'm talking in the apartheid years and subsequently as well. And still today, I mean, the amount of, of black language television is massive. And, and we have had very good, uh, very good directors in all languages and still do. And the black directors are really, have come into their own in the, in the last 10 years in this country. <laughs> There's so much potential in the country, but if opportunity doesn't meet talent, nothing happens, you know? You can be as talented as you want, but if there aren't avenues for you to express that and people investing and believing in it, it goes nowhere. 
Anthony Pella has worked on everything from commercials to movies and is part of the Indie Village Creative Agency. And I think South Africa has that potential because people might not know this, but a lot of films get shot in South Africa. It's telling you that we have the appetite, the climate, the competence. We just need the investment. I love that they're starting to invest more in South Africa because yeah. I know they've I know they've been big. They've been heavily invested in countries like Nigeria, course, like course, Western course, countries. Course, yeah. They've been heavily invested in them. But now is the time to put South Africa forward as well. Yeah, yeah. I think we're one of the best filmmakers probably in Africa, even in the world. Are you willing to suffer? Because so, so much of filmmaking is just sacrifice. Shatal Makan has a reputation for tackling tough social issues and is focused on capturing novel South African stories in their purest forms. It's not like other industries where you can just go off and be an artist because there's so much money at stake. And if you don't control that expertise, you're just going to be tossed around and never have your own trajectory. I'm talking about like the transition between traditional film to streaming services now. Like, how have you sort of managed to find your balance between the two? And what is the importance of streaming moving forward? I think streaming has made a bigger conversation, but it's a bit like buying bulk commercial oil, you know? <laughs> so everything has its place. It's shifted the market. I think as an Indian woman, the, the connection between America and India and that cultural tie with, between the West and the East has become so strong that for someone like me, it, it, I feel so much safer yeah. in, in a Netflix world. You know, I've, I've worked, I was part of the production for the first Netflix uh, original film that was made in the country. The name of the film was Ayanda and the Mechanic, produced by Terry Peto, and that was an interesting experience. Streaming has arrived. You know, it, 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 it makes economic sense. Yeah. You know, the massive turnover of stuff that they can, because there is such huge turnover, they're able to make uh, more of it if they do it cheaper. Um, you know, there's a lot of Netflix coming out of this yeah. country at the moment. The advent of streaming and what Netflix has done in the last five years, and now with Disney and Paramount and Hulu and uh, Amazon and all of these other uh, platforms, is that it creates more opportunities for content. It raises the bar of the quality and the level that our work needs to be produced at. I really love what they're doing because um, a lot of people uh, have stories to tell. So essentially that's what it's about. The stories need to be told and these these platforms are actually allowing us to actually do that, you know? They're actually allowing us to get out there and actually do stuff like that. Right, 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 right. hold up. Before we ramble on about Netflix and all of that shit, <laughs> let's take it back to about a year ago. NFEF and Netflix signed a partnership to fund local filmmakers. This joint fund, valued at 28 million rand, will provide 100% funding to six micro-budget films to boost the recovery for South Africa's creative industry. Tick, talk, ticking. Work, traffic, family, time, ticking. And what, what is your take on commercial side versus actual film? I reached a point where I felt like if directing commercials was going to be the peak of my career, then I just couldn't do it. But the moment you become a commercials director, yeah, you become yeah. a lot less willing <laughs> to suffer and people just don't go back for more. Yeah, I've worked with all kinds of brands from Nike to Adidas. Um, I guess something that was really special to me was shooting for Vogue. I love working with brands that uh, closely correlate with whatever it is that we're doing, like stuff that has to do with cameras, stuff that has to do with movies, stuff that uh, we're doing, we have a food channel where we do some stuff with that. Yeah, yeah. So stuff that has to do with that as well. So it just needs to be also very friendly, like family friendly. Mm -hmm. I know the boys is one of the hectic <laughs> ones. It's quite yeah, hectic. Was, I'm not sure how much. <laughs> 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 
about your involvement in the music video industry mm. like just yeah. talk to me about that how has it grown yeah. from the days of I mean yeah. to, to where like you are where we today. are now yeah. all the dope videos that we, we've done eh? yeah. previously um, that went on to win awards like th those videos had anything from a budget of like 80,000 to like 300k and the videos cost money, so cost. like if you want good videos, cost. you need to put down the cash. It's important to believe in the stories that you want to tell, and that is my dream of writing shows and series that we can all look at and go, that is distinctly South African. If you want to be a writer, you've got to you've got to write. First, <laughs> you got and, and even if you write badly, yeah, yeah. try and write another, again. Yeah. Try again. I say it's a turning point because you have to give up the commercials game. You have yeah. to really make a commitment to go to festivals and see what's happening and kind of speak to other storytellers and make that commitment. Do the groundwork yourself and create a portfolio of work at whatever level you're able to. And make sure that when you start, you register a company for yourself. Make sure everybody pays you through the company, yeah, and then the company must pay you. But it's been me for five years, like, you know, we've lost people along the way, and then you finally get to Netflix, and it's because you've held that commitment that I believe in this idea. I think that's what makes good indie producers. You see that idea, you know its potential, and you just don't give up on it until, until actually sometimes even the market shifts in its favor, yeah. As an artist, just know that you are a business, like embedded into your head. <laughs> Guys, embedded into your head. As an artist, you are a business, yeah. always. The commercial industry used to be the go-to place for a stable career, alternative to filmmaking. For years, commercials were high budget and high profile jobs. And although that is still the case, in many instances, the rise of streaming platforms is injecting a new sense of urgency into the South African film industry. Wait, have we started or what? We are rocking. <laughs> oh, I and mean, me, I'm doing the conversation. That's yeah. the whole point. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Call them out, fam. <laughs> Alright. Show open uh, and all of that. Alright. Now I was waiting for the cue. Oh, good. <laughs>